Hey, good morning, Brian with the Aquascape, Team Aquascape. I thought this Sunday vlog I'd do something a little different and uh, just kind of show you some tricks, tricks of the trade. I'm gonna fix some leaks, I'm gonna hide some edges, I'm gonna show you some proper edge treatment because I'm assuming some of you guys struggle with how to hide that liner at the end, how to hide biofalls, how to hide gaps in between rocks, that kind of stuff. And I know our guys do too as well. Some of our new guys are still a little confused. I've been doing it a long time and so it's, you know, second nature for me, but I want to show you that, see if we can find some leaks. In fact, I'm pulling up to a house or walking into a backyard right now that has a leaky pond, and so we can look at that. But just take you through, and uh, any little tricks that I've learned over the years, show you those, and uh, hopefully you guys become better pond builders because of it. All right, so here's the pondless waterfall. It's a great little pond list Chris and I put in probably three years ago. I love to come back and see how full all the plants are. I mean, look at the Creeping Jenny just like cascading down through here. Japanese maple needs a little pruning, but still gonna look really good. You can see the catnip flourishing. Got some azaleas back there, but everything looks fantastic. It looks exactly like I wanted to, except for one thing. I'm looking at the amount of water in this reservoir in relationship to this area here. Now what we did with this pondless, let me back up. So the way pondlesses work is water comes down, falls down this way, and then into the aqua blocks. My biggest pet peeve with pondlesses is when that water falls down, it just disappears into gravel. I always want to see more of a little pool type area there. So the way I achieve that is by putting a bib liner over the top of the aqua blocks. Now when the water falls down, the water will actually pool up a little bit and then I have to give it a channel or an escape area for that water to go back down into the aqua block. You can see here the water drops down. I've got a bib liner. Let's see if we can actually find that for a second. This water's super cold. There you can see that black rubber liner right there. So there's that bib liner. So what happens though is when I do this bib liner and I create an area for all the water to go down there, sometimes that can get clogged up. Usually I do multiple areas, like I would do an area there, I might do an area over there, and I'd even do an area over here. So then what happens over time is those infiltration areas that we set up and design for that water to go down back into the aqua blocks get clogged up. If they get clogged up, now the water can't get back down in there, the water pools up, and then probably exceeds the edges around in our perimeter here. So the first thing I'm gonna do is start looking for edges. The other thing I do is come over here, look at my vault cap, and try to see where the water level is in relation to this. This is full, and that's down there actually quite a bit. So what happens then is the customer thinks this thing is actually full. In reality, it's down about halfway in there. And so they always need to watch that. Never pay attention to this, especially if you do the bib liner thing. Now you don't have to do the bib liner. The bib liner um, is an option, but it looks so much cooler when there's a little bit of water rather than the magic waterfall, I call it, where the water just comes down, disappears into the gravel area over there. So let's go back to how we fix this. So now I want to start looking at my edges. So let's just move some of these rocks around. I can see how close, like look at where the water level is to the relationship of the gravel in here. Oh, like that is within a, a 16th of an inch there. Look at how this is all been undermined over here. Water's actually moving right through there. Oop, there's an area. That's about as close as you get, right? So we're gonna pull that stuff up. So when you come and do fix-its, the one thing you should do is what I didn't do, and have a little bit of extra soil with you, whether it's you know some bag soil in your truck, a shovel, even if you can steal some soil from somewhere else, will always help, and then you know at least a bucket of gravel or so. So I'm gonna do two things. I'm gonna lift this liner up a little bit more, getting this higher, and then more importantly, try to open up those infiltration areas. In fact, let's open up the infiltration areas first, just so you can see how much lower this water is gonna get when I unclog that and unclog an area over there. So pretty amazing and something super simple. Water level now dropped down in here quite a bit. You can see how much lower that got. You can see it now infiltrating back down into the aqua blocks. Still keeping a slight pool in here, just not nearly as high. Look at how much lower the water level got along this and all in through here. So now it's pretty easy. The other areas I would look for, if I didn't see a low area in here, would just be perimeters along the edges over in here and over in here. 
we can see that the creeping jenny has kind of taken over sometimes those plants as they come actually up and over the liner they'll start wicking water back out of it the other thing we can look for is chipmunks. Now in a yard like this, in a pretty nice yard, and it's wooded, then you know there's chipmunks everywhere. And in fact, when I came back here, I saw chipmunks all running back and through here and through here. And chipmunks love to burrow in around the back sides of spillways and biofalls and stuff. So I would look in there, but I think we're pretty good. I'm gonna put this all back together. And so just like that, we're all set. Everything's back together. I've got the vault lid hidden with some gravel. You can see this stone here, I've just kind of propped up to kind of create like a cave almost that the water can get back in underneath. And more importantly, uh, or just as importantly, still hide my vault area over in here. But I want to make sure I keep a clear path here. The one thing the homeowner is going to have to do is just make sure they maintain this area and so it doesn't get clogged, especially with it being fall and things about to start changing here and a lot of leaves coming down in here. Maybe it's an opportunity to sell a maintenance package. So we'll talk to them about a maintenance package and uh, see if they want us to take care of that for them uh, for the next season. Hopefully that was beneficial. Let's go see what we got going on at some other job sites and see if we can't pull out uh, some more tricks, tricks of the trade. To the next stop, here we go. All right. So edging, to me edging is just as important as building a waterfall. It's kind of like your signature on the pond. And if you look back at our early work, the way we did edging was literally to take a shovel, follow me, come in here, just push this down, and then we'd cover this with gravel. And then ultimately what we were left with is this necklace look of gravel covering a six inch wide area of liner. It looks ridiculous, especially the first year. The only way to hide that is plantings, and that takes some time for that planting to start growing over that six inch border. What I really want to try to achieve is more of an edge like this over here. Look at where the water ends and where our edges end way out over here. So if I think of edges in nature, so and really grab all your inspiration from nature. It's super, super important. Go out, look at some of the natural ponds, some of the natural ecosystems in your area and look at how those edges are done. But I've got water here and then more of this beach-like type entrance here with a mixture of different size gravel from three to four inch up to four to six inch down to you know even some quarter inch to half inch type stuff. My liner is all the way back in here. The key with the edge is to make sure your liner is high enough, obviously. Like the most important thing is to make sure it's higher than water level so you don't have any leaks. But then after that, it's all about aesthetics and it really becomes comes into the eye of the beholder. So I like like this beach type entrance someplace. What I don't want to do is have this though all the way around the perimeter of the pond. That would look ridiculous. So some areas we do that, some areas we come in really close where you can see like this rock here. My liner is just behind it. The liner's always folded. The reason we fold it is so over time, if I need to, I can pull that liner back up, getting some more real estate and making that liner high if I need to. But here we come in, we just push the dirt up right next to the backside of the rock, and then just a little bit of gravel. Now here, I would actually rather see, instead of a vein of gravel right in here, maybe just a little bit more soil. So just a little splash of soil here, and it's all about breaking up the monotony. So whether it's a big beach edge, whether it's a soil edge like this and my, my soil comes right up to the back side of the rock, making it look like the rock has stopped the soil from eroding down into the pond, or it's a cleaner edge like this one we've got over here. They went with a crushed stone aggregate over here for the patio and I'm just going to bring this right up and over the top of my liner. You can see my liner and I just bring this right up and over it. Now I have a nice clean edge like that. So a bunch of different ways. I'm gonna to continue to show you guys edges and edging treatments, um, I think for the rest of the year because there's a thousand and one ways to do it, but there's also a few very obvious ways on how not to do it. And I'm gonna to try to find you some of those ponds too, maybe some of those early ponds we did way back when. Hey guys, I hope you enjoyed this section of Brian's Sunday vlog, whatever they're calling it these days. I wanna keep educating you guys. In the meantime, I get educated just sharing that stuff with you guys. Tell me if you liked it, tell me what you wanna hear, and I'll keep sharing. Thanks so much.